Okay, thank you everybody. Hopefully you can still enjoy some lunch or dessert while I go over this. And I look forward to presenting to you. I think a lot of you have probably seen or heard about our company. We have uh, a number of drugs on the market today using our DuraCert technology, uh, which is a sustained release product that in many cases can last in, in Utique and Alluvian's case over up to three years. And then we have Redacert and Vitracert. Vitracert's no longer available. Uh, the point being is we've got a well-proven drug delivery technology. Now these are in a non-erodible form. And then EYP1901 is our go, uh, going into phase two asset in a bio-erodible form. And we hope to announce soon first patient dose in wet AMD and then diabetic retinopathy. Um, and actually, uh, uh, we also plan to go into diabetic macular edema as opposed to retinal vein occlusion. Um, uh, and then we continue to have other areas we're looking at for uh, posterior segment uveitis. So this is the DuraCert technology. It's clinically validated. Uh, we estimate it's been administered safely now in over 80,000 patients' eyes. Uh, we continue to have a very, very uh, remarkable safety profile. And this particular one in our 1901 is tailored to be bioerodible. It's broadly compatible with a host of uh, small molecules uh, and all different types of APIs. We can tailor it for however long we want it to last. And we have a very strong patent estate. Please note the way this erodes is that it erodes throughout the matrix. There's no microspheres. It's just an erosion out from the polymers. And there is no PLGA. Uh, in here. Now, let me talk a little bit about virolinib, which is our tyrosine kinase inhibitor, and where we are with this critically important asset to our company. And by the way, I will be making forward-looking statements. We are publicly traded. So this is a picture coming out of our phase one Davio trial. This is at five months uh, of the implant in a patient's eyes. You can actually see in the insert there, you see a little bit of the white. That's actually the drug eroding. You can also see that the insert is starting to erode as well because it's much thinner than at the other end, which has got more drug in it, and it's thicker. And that's what we're actually seeing. It just erodes overall as the API. This is about 80% uh, drug and 20% polymer. So when the drug is gone, you're back to just a whisper of the polymer, which then continues to take a little more time to erode. But it's so tiny, the physicians really have a very difficult time even finding this in the patient's eyes. Um, very similar technology to our approved drugs. The polyamide shell was removed. It's the only difference between the non-erodible and the erodible. You do get an initial surface burst from the implant, which is good, and then it quickly goes into zero-order kinetics. Virolinib is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor. Many of you are aware of that. It activity against all isoforms of VEGF and PDGF. And then one of the reasons we liked this asset and we unlicensed it in from uh, the Chinese company Beta is because they had taken it through phase two orally in humans. Of course, it showed your unfortunate systemic side effects, but they showed a strong proof of concept in wet AMD. Uh, and we liked the fact that it had that proven proof of concept in wet AMD all the way through phase two in humans. That was 153 patients, I believe. Now, this is looking at in the rabbit. Uh, you can see this very, very nice, both our three doses, which we put in the Davio one trial, consistent, very nice, zero order kinetics. And the inserts are nearly empty past eight months, um, and the release rate is dose proportional. This is actually looking again <clears throat> at the animal model, the rabbit model, and you can see here the various levels in the various tissues. You can see whether it's the uh, vitreous, uh, the choroid, um, uh, and at the very bottom actually is the plasma. This is a logarithmic scale, but you get very, very little levels at all in the plasma. In fact, in the human, it's really undetectable. This is in the rabbit. But what you see is you get an initial burst, and then you see this nice zero-order kinetics. Once you get out to eight months, you can see that drop off occurring. And in almost all the animals, it was pretty much depleted by the time you got out to uh, nine months, 10 months. This is from our Davio date results. You can see 53% were supplement free by six months. It was a, a, a small study, 17 patients, open label, not controlled. 
Uh, and you can see then we're, we have released data out to nine months with 41%. We want to see that drop off because we're not re-injecting. In this study, we're not re-injecting. We know the implant's depleted, so we do expect the patients will need more rescue or supplemental care as time goes on. But the nice thing was we hit our goal, which is over 50%. At six months, we're rescue-free or supplement-free. Now, w this is just one. We have shown OCTs, by the way, of almost all of our patients publicly. I'm just highlighting this one because it's interesting. This is a 71-year-old female, and you can see that she was uh, dry. And by the way, we, this, we induced with anti-VEGF therapy, and then we injected on day zero with EYP-1901, and they received concomitantly another uh, um, anti-VEGF. So what you see here is the patient's dry because they're all prior treated, by the way. These are not naive. So we want to maintain vision and OCTs. So this patient, you can see was dry. You can see in the left-hand top. This was on entry. Day zero, they got, on the left-hand side, they got uh, EYP-1901. You can see the patient continues to maintain dry. And then look at month four, which is the top box, almost in the middle there. And the patient did get rescued because you can start to see a little bit of fluid buildup. The nice thing is that patient... Uh, this particular patient out through month 12, and this is now in the public domain, by the way, in our low cohort, this patient remained rescue-free through the rest of the time period. So it's interesting that this patient showed a little bit of fluid recurrence, not a lot, but did need some rescue, and then didn't need any more after that. And we have seen that in the data we've released so far up through nine months, that you see a remarkable reduction in overall treatment burden and a very nice reduction in even the need for any supplemental. But occasionally these patients do need a supplement, but they just don't need that chronic therapy over and over again that you get often with the uh, large molecule anti-VEGFs. So we call this treat to maintain, and we do believe it could be a new paradigm of treating patients. Get your patients uh, as dry as you can on standard of care, doesn't matter what it is. Uh, and then that could be anywhere from probably three to six months. P give them an EYP-1901. You continue to get that pan-VEGF coverage. There could be some positive uh, non-VEGF-A, other kinases that are coming in. We plan to study that with these TKIs. And continue to get the uh, maintain with EYP-1901 with much, much lower use of anti-VEGF therapy, large molecule, and potentially many of these patients, if you re-inject every six months, can just remain on 1901. Some may need an occasional boost, but we hope at least 50% or more can go uh, with just consistent 1901 every six months. So uh, we do believe this could be a new way to think about things, particularly, of course, with some of the GA, GA drugs coming in that may need once every month injections. It's a way to relieve that treatment burden for these patients. They get the support they need, and they don't have to be treated nearly as much. Uh, so if you're interested, please come to our late breaker, which is this Friday, July 15th, 8.57 a.m., presented by Dr. Rishi Singh, 12-month results of our Davio 1 data. And lastly, we do have another drug delivery technology. This is our Verisome delivery. You can see it's a very different technology. So far, uh, this is used with our DexiQ uh, for dexamethasone, which is delivered anteriorly with uh, cataract surgery. But we are continuing to look at this with other small molecules and potentially biologics. Won't go out quite as long as Duracert, but it has more uh, utilization with other types of molecules. So I thank you very much and look forward to our 12-month data.